Protecting parental rights. A new state law requiring schools to notify home for emergency and non-emergency issues. Why some critics say it could spell trouble for some households. Fox 17 News digs into allegations of a Williamson County principal violating the Individuals with Disabilities Act, which led to a confrontation. What is the real reason that you don't? Why that principal has suddenly resigned. And massive construction underway. Titans fans forced to run a new playbook this season. The stadium workaround for parking heading into the first preseason game. Middle Tennessee's only prime time news. This is Fox 17 News at 9, your code red station. You can't even give a kid an aspirin without getting parental consent. Tonight in Crisis in the Classroom, a new state law outlining parental rights, raising some concerns. It gives parents a choice about whether their child receives medical treatment and counseling at school. Now, if parents refuse to sign the consent form, their children only receive emergency treatment. Fox 17 News' Caitlin Miller live downtown outside the state capitol after taking concerns from parents to legislators. Yes, well, Scott and Megan, at first, teachers and school nurses were questioning whether they could even put band-aids on their students if they were bleeding. Now, we spoke with State Senator Farrell Hale today, who sponsored this law, and he says that that falls under the emergency clause where that treatment is allowed. But still, school nurses and staff are afraid of losing their license or even getting sued. Senator Hale says the goal is to put parents in the driver's seat when it comes to their child's medical and psychological treatment. Concerns included children being given medication at schools without their permission. This law requires a form allowing parents to say yes or no. The teachers operate in fear of being sued all the time. You got guidance counselors, school nurses, people who deal intricately with children every day. J.C. Bowman with the Professional Educators of Tennessee supports the law, but wants lawmakers to provide school staff with some clarity and guidance. School nurses, you know, are scared, um, you know, that they could get their license revoked if they were to respond to a child. What would you have to say to these school nurses? I don't see that playing out. Um, what we're looking at is the best interest of the child. Nurses in schools have the best interest of the child. Even so, the law says a staff member must receive parental consent before treating, diagnosing, or prescribing for any physical ailment, injury, or deformity. It's clear emergency assistance can be provided. What's not so clear is what constitutes an emergency and how that applies to counseling. Bowman says there have been problems in Iowa, which passed a similar law. They discovered that, that they saw child abuse claims going down because they couldn't report because parents wouldn't get permission. Senator Hale says that he is open to amending the law if more questions arise. Reporting live from downtown, I'm Caitlin Miller, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Well, Crisis in the Classroom is Fox 17 News commitment to exposing problems in our schools and finding solutions. If you have a story that you think we should cover, send us an email to news at fox17.com. You can also call our tip line, the number on your screen, 615-266-4149. Could light up any room that they walked in. Remembering two Fisk University grads killed over the weekend in a crash Metro Police say was caused by an impaired driver. Fox 17 News' Karen Aguilar live tonight at Fisk University with more. A friend of theirs from Fisk University tells me that the crash was completely avoidable, claiming the lives of two women with so much ahead of them. The campus of Fisk University in North Nashville is where two young ladies connected and used it as a launch pad for their hopes and dreams. Holly Wagner and Natalie White are part of the class of 2021. Katera Grissom knew both of them. She's a cheer and dance coach, and White was one of her dancers. Grissom says White and Wagner were always together and always smiling. Literally always smiling, always joyful, happy. They would be considered the life of the party. 
a party that ended tragically in Madison at the intersection of Gallatin Road and Cood Lane. Wagner and White were in a Ford Focus. Police say a Jeep ran a red light, hitting and killing them both. What was your reaction when you first heard the news? I was completely devastated. I'm still, still in a place of disbelief. Police say the driver of the Jeep, Giovanni Bolstad, was under the influence. He's charged with DUI, two counts of vehicular homicide, and driving on a revoked license. Court records show it was not his first DUI arrest. Grissom was part of a memorial Wednesday at Fist Memorial Chapel. There were tears shed, but we also shared some laughs um, because just remembering who they were and the smiles that they brought to us on a daily basis. Bullstead's next court date is on August the 15th. We don't know yet the victim's funeral arrangement, but when we do know, we'll bring that information to you. Reporting live here in Madison, Karen Aguilar, Fox 17 News, your Code Red station. My children call me coupon boy because I'm too cheap to pay 50 or 60 bucks to park. A new deny growing pains for Titans fans and the fact that they're inconvenienced this season while the city breaks ground on a brand new dome stadium, which will debut in the 2027 NFL season. Well, as you can see from the video here on your screen, much of the original parking lot has been demolished and it's putting some fans in a frenzy asking where do I park now? Fox 17 News Kylie Walker looks into a possible solution. That's right, this dirt lot right behind me will look very different in the coming years. In fact, the site and the stadium will see lots of changes as a whole. But until then, the biggest thing you'll notice this season is the tailgating and the parking. While this main parking lot at Nissan Stadium is under construction, most Titan fans are forced to find alternative parking this season. So I'm optimistic, but I acknowledge that I'm going to have to improvise. Scott Huey is a diehard Titans fan and season ticket holder, attending almost every game for the last eight years. I love the Titans too much to let parking or the lack of parking get in the way of my attending the games. Reps of the Titans say all available on-site stadium parking this season's already sold out. So prepare to get your steps in to snag one of the 20,000 spots available within one mile of the football field. These maps show where some of those alternative lots are. The red stars show the rideshare pickup locations, and in yellow, you'll see the walking routes. Um, and, and honestly, what, what we suggest is really encouraging people to think about using the Woodland Street Bridge on the north side of the stadium, um, in addition to Korean Veterans Boulevard Bridge on the south side of the stadium. As for Huey, he's lucked out the past couple of times he went to the stadium for a summer concert, somehow always finding that hidden parking spot. So, of course, we had to ask where. <laughs> no, I don't want to tell anybody where I'm parking. But it's on, the, you know, I have found a spot on the street. And after a little more pestering, he gave us a clue. It's a 12-minute walk. But some East Nashville homeowners are hoping it's not on their street, fed up with event parking. Oh, well, these no parking cones are set up for the Tomato Fest this weekend. And I mentioned tailgating earlier and how that will look different. Well, those who have already purchased a parking spot, of course, you can bring your car in, but remember tailgating will be downsized. For fans on foot, there will be a fan activation station around the perimeter of the stadium. And for all of those details on parking, we have that information on our website, fox17.com. We're currently reporting from the La Quinta Inn, where they will also offer parking as well as other hotels. For now, reporting in downtown Nashville, Kylie Walker, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. And we want to know what you think. Would limited parking at Nissan Stadium prevent you from attending a Titans game this season? 316 people weighing in tonight. It's a deal breaker for some. Most actually. 68.7% say yes, it would impact the decision to go to a game this year. 31.3% say no. This poll is live right now. To cast your vote, you can scan the QR code on your screen. It will take you to our X page. You can also find it by our handle at Fox Nashville. And we'll show you updated poll results here tonight at 10. All right, let's talk about your weather. Last night, Katie was saying, you know, how the weekend was going to, you know, have cooler temperatures. I feel like it came early a little bit. It, it did, and, and I'll be honest, uh, the cloud cover kind of, uh, you know, played me today as far as <laughs> the forecast goes. You know it was going to hang around, it didn't you? It hung around a little bit longer than I expected, yeah, and that really does put a, a kink in the forecast. Uh, and that happens from time to time. I'll tell you what, Tennessee weather keeps me humble.
that's for sure. In fact, we were maybe 10 degrees off for uh, this uh, this afternoon compared to yesterday. We ended up at 84 this afternoon, and again, it was because we were socked in with that cloud cover as the front pushed through uh, this morning and just kind of hung around for the afternoon. Now, as we head through tonight, I do expect mostly cloudy to partly cloudy skies, so the cloud cover won't completely clear out, uh, but we are going to look at a rather, a rather mild night ahead, and a lot of that, again, due to the some of the cloud cover that's hanging around along with it. The mugginess is going to stick with us too. live look here downtown on Broadway. Uh, folks on about having a good time this evening here. Still sitting right around 80 degrees with that mostly cloudy sky and stagnant air once again expected with very little wind or air movement through the overnight hours. So we should bottom out around 74 here in Nashville. Murfreesboro right around 72. Clarksville sitting at 70 and looking at temperatures right around 70 degrees out towards the Cumberland Plateau. So we will take a look at a cooler pattern that is going to arrive for this weekend, and it's not so much temperatures. It's more so the humidity that's making a big difference for us. We'll talk why coming up in your Fox 17 code red forecast. Thanks, Katie. Also ahead, what a Williamson County principal did after we told you she refused to meet with the parents of a special needs student. We've only hit 100 degrees here in Nashville one time this year, but back in 1930, the same day, we were in the middle of one of the most notorious heat waves that we've had in Nashville. We'll talk about that. Also, uh, just go over some other 100 degree facts for you coming up here in just a bit. New information tonight as a Williamson County principal resigns after we tell you she refused to meet with the parents of a special needs student. Well, the parents were concerned that teachers were not following their daughter's individual education plan. Fox 17 News Amanda Chin broke this story and has an update on how our investigation led to a resignation. This student's mother says the cancellation of this meeting isn't the only thing that's happened. She believes there's been a decline in her child's academic progress, including time spent watching shows rather than receiving an education, which she says starts at the top. 11 year old Tess Carter goes to Bethesda Elementary School in Williamson County. Tess has Down syndrome and relies on an individual education plan, also known as an IEP, to receive the best education possible. Our previous Fox 17 investigation revealed the principal canceled a scheduled IEP meeting with the Carter family because the family brought an advocate to help them listen and respond. What is the real reason that you don't? It's that I would feel better having, I guess, having someone from central office from student support services here to kind of keep their eye on, on things. Keep their eye on what? Where are her parents? So do you have the power to meet with us right now? Um, I mean, I've been told everything I've always no, been No, yes told. or no. Do you have the power to meet with us right now? It's yes or no. Like, do you? I don't guess no. You guess now? I, I don't know if, if it's a yes or no answer. We have also learned the principal sent a resignation email to Bethesda families on May 24th, one day after the district knew Fox 17 was working on the story. Through a public records request, we discovered on May 29th, the principal sent an official letter of resignation to the district. It was very frustrating, and not only frustrating, but scary because I even asked her, do you have our child's interests at heart? And she said, oh, 100%, absolutely. But then I said, no, you do not, because if you did, we would meet. The family's advocate says the denial of her joining the meeting at the family's request violates the Individuals with Disabilities Act, which states here in section 300.321 that parents may bring other individuals who have knowledge or special expertise regarding the child. The family told Fox 17 an assistant superintendent advised them the principal's action was appropriate, but not the best decision to make for tests. Fox 17 tried to independently verify the meeting cancellation on three separate occasions. However, the district would never confirm an IEP meeting was canceled. Fox 17 reached out to the state's Open Records Council, which helped us obtain emails showing the cancellation occurred. But at this point, um, you know, we're trying to figure out how to move forward here and, and get things changed. And also, I would like for other parents to know that it's not appropriate. The district tells Fox 17 they are proud of their special education teachers and staff and the services they provide. Tess's mom feels everyone, including the administration, should be on the same page when it comes to special education policies and procedures. 
Reporting in the studio, I'm Amanda Chin, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. A lot of cloud cover today, Katie. It seemed like it wanted to rain. We just yeah. couldn't get there. Yeah, a lot of us didn't end up with the showers. There were a few on the plateau that uh, did end up seeing a little bit of rain, but our rain chances again remain few and far between between now and probably the middle of next week before we're seeing a big pattern shift that will support a better rain chance for all of Middle Tennessee. We're back to the 90s for Thursday with temperatures expected right around 92 or so here in town. Partly cloudy skies. I do think we'll see a little more sunshine by tomorrow. And then we are looking into the weekend, which which is shaping up to be one of the best weekends that we have seen likely in a few months. So here's radar and satellite right now. Again, after um, I would say last couple of hours here, 5, 6 p.m. Uh, we had a few of those showers on the plateau, but they have since dissipated. Big story remains Debbie, a uh, tropical storm Debbie here off the Carolina coastline continues to drench North and South Carolina and will slowly march northward as we head toward the weekend as we get more towards Friday and Saturday, it will make its way up towards Virginia and eventually toward New England, still dropping tons of rainfall. But we remain on the dry side, so our rain chances again remain very slim. Temperature right around 83 at 10 o'clock. We're up to about 91 as we head towards the afternoon. A mainly sunny to partly cloudy sky expected here. Future track does clear out some clouds overnight, but brings in a few more for tomorrow morning. And as we get into the later part of the day, it is insistent on bringing in a stray shower chance. I still think that this rain chance is going to be slim to none. It won't be 100% dry, uh, but let's go maybe 98% dry across the area. Uh, so these stray showers here, I think are overdone a little bit on future track, but not out of the realm of possibility that we see a stray shower or two around. Other than that, we'll get by with partly cloudy skies for the day. And then going into uh, Friday morning, we're looking at uh, mainly clear to partly cloudy skies. It's going to be this weekend that is looking much better here. Again, it's not so much the temperatures because today we were at 84 degrees forecasting mid to upper 80s this weekend. It's the humidity today. It was quite steamy. It will stay steamy for Thursday and Friday, but this weekend the humidity drops off quite a bit to the pleasant category. We'll even say Saturday and Sunday looking great as far as uh, how it will feel outside. You'll want to be outside for much of the day. Temperatures again for tomorrow in Nashville right around 92. Murfreesboro at 92. Clarksville will be right around 90. And we'll hover around 90 toward the Tennessee River with upper 80s out towards the Cumberland Plateau. We've seen our fair share of 90s, of course, and even days 95 plus, including one day at 100 this year. But how does that stack up against previous years? Here's meteorologist Brett Luna. Here in Nashville, I'd say it's not super common, but also definitely not uncommon at all for us to hit 100 degrees. We average a 100 degree day every three to four years here in Nashville. On this day back in 1930, though, we were in one of the most notorious heat waves that we've had. In 1930, on this day, Nashville hit 104 degrees. This was the second of four consecutive days with high temperatures of more than 100. We've also gone long stretches, though, without even having a 100 degree day. Back in 2012, that was a crazy year, the hottest day in in June that year was 109 degrees. That's also the hottest day on record for us. And then in July, the hottest day was 105. That's also obviously way above normal too. After that, we went almost 10 years straight without hitting 100 again. We didn't hit 100 again until June of 2022. In 2023, we had a 100 degree day in August. And then this year, we've hit 100 degrees one time. That was back on July 14th. Some more cool Nashville 100 degree facts for you. The most 100 degree days that we had in a year, uh, that was 20 back in 1954 and the most consecutive days of 100 degrees or higher is eight and that was from June 23rd uh, to June 30th in 1952. Well, thank you. Promoters cancel three Taylor Swift concerts in Europe. The threat behind that decision. As Metro students head back to school this week, Nashville's Department of Transportation Department, they're announcing 15 new safety measures to help kids stay safe this year. Those upgrades include improved visibility of school crossings, added pavement markings that alert drivers to slow down in school zones, enhanced radar feedback signs that display driver speeds, and added flashing school zone beacons. 
Look tonight, promoters cancel three Taylor Swift concerts in Austria after threats of a terrorist attack. Police there arrested a couple of men they say were planning a terror attack at one of the shows. The Associated Press is reporting that the plot included other major events in that area. Now, authorities believe the suspects became radicalized over the Internet. A 33 year old death row case, new evidence, a shaky conviction and a demand, actually a plea for the governor to review the case. We spoke to the governor today. That story is next. An update tonight on a death row case that Fox 17 News has been following now for over a year. Tonight, new information that may lead to Governor Billy reviewing a conviction appeal. Fox 17 News' Dennis Ferrier has the story. A double murder in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains, a shaky conviction, and now 33 years later, a demand for review. Friends and family of Gary Sutton make the long trip from the Smokies to hold a press conference at the Capitol. At this point, they want one thing. They want the man in the office behind them to meet with Gary Sutton's dear friend, Carolyn Miller. We're begging you, Governor Lee, please, just take a look at this case. Just sit down. If you don't want to do anything else, then that's fine. But we, we know that once you look at this in your heart, you're going to know that this was a wrongful conviction. Um, so please, we're just asking some time from you. We've spent more than a year on this case, but let's just briefly recap. The family hired private investigator Heather Cohen to review the case and re-interview witnesses. Cohen discovered some witnesses felt key parts of their testimony was left out at trial. Cohen found a new witness that pointed to an entirely different suspect with a strong motive for the murders of Tommy Griffin and Connie Branham. There were huge problems with evidence as well, and the key witness for the prosecution, disgraced medical examiner Charles Harlan, didn't make sense. So many problems, State Senator Paige Wally and longtime County Mayor T.R. Williams from Lawrence County asked Governor Lee for a meeting to go over the case that has not happened. Last October, we stood on these very steps pleading with Governor Lee to look at Gary's case. Nine months and dozens of letters later, our requests have still been fruitless. Every day that passes is one more day of Gary's life that is lost. Governor Lee, we are asking you for a moment of your time Gary Sutton fills his days in prison, woodworking and painting and hoping, hoping that Governor Lee will take a hard, long look at what happened to him. Gary's not getting younger. He's he's almost 60 years old now. He's been in there since he was 27. But we, we know that once you look at this in your heart, you're going to know that this was a wrongful conviction. We asked the governor, is he going to review this case? He said he won't even consider it until Tennessee comes up with a new death penalty protocol. What I'm focused on before I start reviewing other cases is uh, making sure we get this protocol right for it before I review any death row cases at all. You might remember Governor Lee suspended all executions 18 months ago. And we don't have any news on a new protocol. This is terrible news for Gary Sutton, his family and supporters, because who knows how long it will take for the governor to even consider reviewing this case. I'm Dennis Ferrier, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. In news from across the state, starting today, 10 Care is offering Tennessee parents a new benefit, 100 free diapers a month for children all the way up to age two. As Fox 17 News' Madeline Nolan shows us, the only requirement is that they're either enrolled in 10 Care or the Cover Kids health care plan. The cost of diapers is just soaring these days. That's why this program is just huge. And not to mention, Tennessee is the first state Medicaid program to offer this benefit. It's all part of Governor Bill Lee's Strong Families Initiative. TenCare is partnering with pharmacies across the state to ensure families have easy access to the program. On your screen is a list of participating pharmacies in the immediate metro area. TenCare or Cover Kids members may walk into any participating pharmacy, show their child's Optimar X card, 
or provide their child's social security number. For new parents waiting on their 10 care ID for their newborn, they may use their own ID. But according to Governor Lee, the state has achieved more than $600 million in shared savings, allowing for them to serve Tennessee with no additional state expense. And here's the best part. We're doing all of this without burdening Tennessee taxpayers. Through responsible management of our 10 care program and the shared savings model, these crucial services will be provided at no additional cost to Tennesseans. Initially, select lines and sizes of Huggies and Cuties diapers will be covered, but over time, other brands like Pampers or even Loves will be added. But you do want to make sure that you check in with your participating pharmacy, like the one I met, to make sure that sizes and everything else is stocked. In Nashville, Madeline Nolan, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Cloud cover hung around this afternoon. Uh, most of us got by with uh, little to no rain and still though watching most of the rain showers uh, associated with Debbie here along the Carolina coastline. We did have a few stray showers work their way into the Cumberland Plateau. But you can see now things uh, are dry and that's the way we should stay as we head through the next couple of days. Really, I'm not expecting outside of a stray shower chance on the radar. A uh, good chance for rain until we get into next week. We've got a great festival going on this weekend, the Tomato Arts Festival in East Nashville. Temperatures uh, look to be quite comfortable. We'll be in the middle uh, 80s or so to upper 80s on Friday and cooler as we head towards Saturday. Of the two days, Saturday is looking better just because we'll have lower humidity and lower temperatures, but both days are looking dry. You can see 10 o'clock here on Friday around 74 up to about 90 for the afternoon and only in the low to mid 80s as we head towards the afternoon hours on Saturday with mainly sunny skies. For tomorrow morning, it'll be another mild overnight, so We'll start off in those mid 70s with a partly cloudy sky and we'll quickly climb once again into the low 80s. We have to endure the humidity just a few more days uh, before we can feel the comfortable air make a comeback coming in this weekend. We'll talk more about the weekend forecast and why it was a little hazy outside today. That's all in your Fox 17 code red forecast. I'm calling it quits the decision of one Titans player to retire and how the team hopes to fill the hole. Shocking news out of Titans training camp this week as one Titans player who was projected to start decides to retire right in the middle of camp. Well, this comes just days away from the Titans first preseason game against the San Francisco 49ers. Fox 17 sports director Jill Jelnick has more, including who is expected to take his spot. It's not very often you see an NFL player retire middle of training camp. However, that was the decision made by Titans offensive lineman Sadiq Charles. Charles was expected to earn the starting right guard spot for the Titans, but now leaves a gaping hole up front. Fourth year guard Dylan Radens is now expected to take over that spot after he was listed as the backup on the depth chart. And Radens says he's ready to be a starter in this league. I think I've always been ready and I think uh, just taking the opportunities that uh, have been given to me. Uh, uh, I think it'll turn out great. So you never want to see a guy, especially that caliber of player, that caliber of human, um, just uh, have to hang him up like that. So, uh, I mean, it's it, it was just more of a, you just kind of think on it and uh, you just don't take anything for granted. Yeah, no, it was a big surprise. Um, I mean, just hoping everything's all good with him and uh, um, for all the guys, I mean, I mean, we love him. Uh, everybody, you know, he's a, he's a great guy in the locker room. I just wish him the best. It, it was definitely a, a shock to all of us. and. Uh, we want to make sure that he has his privacy and his comfort and his decision. Titans added another key player to the defense this week, signing former Seahawks safety Quandre Diggs to a one year deal worth up to five million. Diggs was named to the Pro Bowl in each of his first three seasons in Seattle, and he has not missed a game in four years. I do all the things that you need me to do. Um, I go get the football. I've been very consistent in that top 10 in the last however many years, top five, you know, in the last however many years. So very cerebral in what I do. And, um, you know, I take this serious, you know, it's my job and, um, 
you know, when I'm when I'm dialed in, when I'm ready to go, it's you know, it's go time. A veteran vibe, a veteran player who who's smart, who's been successful in the league. I mean, right away, you know, we, we, we've been t talking, connecting, uh, talking about ball, you know, the last two days. So, I mean, we're just excited. I'm excited to have him out here and, you know, to play some ball with him. Dig says he's been training and working out all summer long, but he did miss the first two weeks of Titans training camp. Head coach Brian Callahan says that they put him on a management plan to make sure they ease his way back into training camp with the team. Reporting from Titans practice facility, Jill John Lick, Fox 17 Sports, your Code Red Station. Coming up, we'll talk more about the Titans forecast for the first preseason game on Saturday. Governor Tim Walls now in the national spotlight as Vice President Harris's new running mate. I'm Atrell Nashar with why both Democrats and Republicans say Walls gives their party an advantage. In politics, the swing state blitz is underway tonight by Vice President Kamala Harris and her new running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz. Fox 17 News Antra El Nashar taking a closer look at Waltz's record and what it means to both Democrats and Republicans. And by the way, we want to hear from you. Scan the QR code that will appear here shortly on your screen during the story. Democrats' last-minute presidential ticket shakeup ending with Governor Tim Walz joining the race. I couldn't be prouder to be on this ticket. Republicans now in a race to define him as too progressive. He's a shocking pick, and I'm, I'm thrilled. I could not be more thrilled. They're quick to call out Walz's handling of the 2020 riots in Minneapolis following the murder of George Floyd, saying he was too late to call in the National Guard. Tim Waltz is a crazy radical, of course. He allowed rioters to burn down Minneapolis. Walz's spokesperson at the time said they did not want to act before they had a clear strategy for handling the violence. The Trump Vance campaign also say he's too weak on immigration. And when it comes to Walz's military record, 24 years in the Army National Guard. He was the highest ranking enlisted man to ever serve in the United States Congress. Critics are downplaying his service, reviving years old criticism about his decision to leave the Guard in 2005 to run for Congress at 41 years old. It was shortly before his battalion was deployed to Iraq. He dropped out of the army and allowed his unit to go without him. Meanwhile, it's hard to find a Democrat who isn't thrilled about Walls joining the ticket. From progressive Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Governor Walls is a uniter. To moderate former Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, who says Walls is the real deal. The party's working to brush off attacks that Walls is too far left, pointing out he's a gun owner, once had an A rating from the NRA, and supported the Keystone Pipeline. We're going to make inroads in into what were the red areas of the swing states, and Tim Waltz will do that. While also leaning into his progressive record on health care, LGBTQ rights, and public education. What Waltz brings to the ticket in the immediate term is a new kind of blunt, straightforward messaging style and a fundraising boost. The Harris Walls campaign reports it brought in $36 million in the 24 hours since the running mate announcement. In Washington, I'm Atra Al Nashar. During that story, we had a QR code linked up with this poll asking the question, does Vice President Harris's selection of Tim Walls as her running mate affect how you will vote? Here are the results. 579 people weighing in tonight. 85.3% of respondents say no, doesn't change the way I'm voting. 14.7% say yes, it does. All right, let's talk about the weather, Katie. I hate to complain. We went for, you know, it felt like two weeks where it rained almost every day, yeah. and now all of a sudden, not a drop. <laughs> It's really one way or the other. We never really have that nice, you know, no. couple of days. It's just near perfect, it seems like. My grass is getting crunchy. I'm just, you know, I'm being selfish by yeah. asking. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, it is. It's usually feast or famine. And uh, as far as our rain chances go, I don't see any good ones until the middle of next week. So it's going to be another week before we have an overall great shot at some showers outside of any storm spot or stray shower um, coming our way, which it's very less than 5% chance of that. Uh, live look here downtown, a beautiful skyline. Love these skyline shots at night and all the lights uh, lit up here downtown and along the Cumberland as well. Uh, today, though, if you were out and about, especially downtown, you can easily see the haze that's kind of sitting over the skyline. Yet another day that we have been dealing with smoke. This is a look at our smoke and fire map right now. All these little red dots that you see here, those are all active uh, either wildfires. A lot of these are going to be controlled burns, uh, but this darker kind of gray color here is actually a thicker 
smoke or haze that we have in the sky. So once again, some wildfire smoke uh, a couple days ago was fueled by wildfires out in Colorado and Wyoming actually uh, that brought some smoke our direction and we are still looking at that this evening here. Now as we go through the overnight, we have this uh, future smoke product that does show some of this clearing out a little bit. Uh, temperatures will be in those low 90s and the humidity will still be with there. So I expect a little bit of that the smoke particles to be uh, left in the air, but uh, hopefully won't be quite as uh, thick as what we had as far as uh, we were today. But future track does bring in a little bit of that or at least keep some of it around as we go through the afternoon on Thursday. It, it will dry out even the air. It will clear out as we head towards the weekend with that front coming through. Uh, so it'll be looking much better for the weekend. Bus stop forecast for tomorrow morning right around 74 here at 7 o'clock. 76 as we head towards 8 and almost up to 80 by 9 with mainly sunny to partly cloudy skies. Then we look ahead to the weekend. We're looking great for the first game preseason game for the Titans season this year. Normally this time of August, we're talking about some hot weather even in the nighttime hours. Not going to be the case for us this weekend with temperatures at 80 at kickoff and we should drop into those low 70s. I even went ahead and put light jacket <laughs> as we head towards the evening hours. Nice light layer for the evening walk home might be a good idea as we drop into those 60s quickly through the evening. And again, with the dry air that we will have in place, our temperature will slide a lot more uh, as far as afternoon high to, to overnight low is concerned. So it might start to feel a bit cooler, especially given the drier air that we have around for the weekend. Saturday and Sunday, that's going to be where we're at, up to about 90 for Monday, Tuesday around 90, and looking at isolated thunderstorms to return on Wednesday. Stretching the budget, the financial reality many Americans are facing tonight. Hey there, I'm Fox 17 News This Morning anchor Erica Glover. Let's talk about traveling. Some major changes could be on the way to the airline industry. What the National Transportation Safety Board says they're considering as they meet with Boeing executives this week. We'll talk more about that story Thursday on Fox 17 News This Morning. We'll see you then. In Operation Crime and Justice, a deadly crash on I-40 last night after a driver crossed over the median into oncoming traffic. The interstate temporarily closed, but it's since reopened. Fox 17 News' Johnny Maffey shares what we know about the crash and now who is facing charges. Traffic is moving slowly here on I-40 East in Lebanon after a deadly crash happened overnight. A truck crossing the median from I-40 West and killing the truck driver heading eastbound. 66-year-old Alvin Cotham of Tennessee died. The crash happened late Tuesday night and left the road a mess between exits 236 and 238. Both lanes were closed until just before 7 a.m. as bulldozers and dump trucks hauled off tires and paper products. When we were on the scene, an officer said they were still collecting evidence. Two other cars were involved hitting debris and one of the trailers. Those drivers were not hurt and charges are pending for Kevin Green of North Carolina driving the truck that ended up on the wrong side of the road, and he was also hurt. And as new details come out of this investigation from THP, we will certainly keep you posted. In Lebanon, I'm Johnny Maffey, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. In the economy tonight, never before have so many Americans owed so much. The Federal Reserve Bank in New York reports that credit card debt in our country hit $1.14 trillion at the end of June. That is a $27 billion increase from the previous quarter. Higher food, car and housing prices have combined to hurt budgets for many. An Urban Institute report shows 60% of consumers used credit cards to pay for groceries last year. Titans parking undergoing a big change this season. We'll see what you think of the massive shift. In Operation Crime and Justice, an undercover sting locally results in a Nashville man being charged with raping an underage girl and soliciting sex from nearly a dozen others. Investigators say Squat Car Scott.
quarrels, engaged in graphic online chats with young girls or who he thought were young girls, and sent nude pictures and video of himself. Police say he also tracked the girls' ovulation cycles in an effort to get them pregnant. Charges against him tonight include aggravated statutory rape, solicitation, and electronic exploitation. They say that he used the name Scoffit on the Kick app and P. Harrington 37 on Snapchat. Other alleged victims are urged to call the TBI. And now an update on our viewer poll asking, would limited parking at Nissan Stadium prevent you from attending a Titans game this season? 336 people weighing in could be a deal breaker for some. 69.3% of respondents say yes. The parking situation would impact their decision to go to the game. 30.7% say no, it would have no effect. We'll have an update on these numbers for you a little later tonight. A new law that aims to protect parents' rights is raising a lot of concerns for